Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and for the most part, I've been thrilled with the progress of my new koi pond build, but there are a couple problems that need to be addressed. Actually, three, but the first thing I need to address is the waterfall, because it's just not finished. Currently, the water on my waterfall is running under the rocks and not giving the effect it's supposed to, and the solution for that is to use a waterfall foam in between all the rocks. But I haven't been able to do that because when you put the foam in, it needs 48 hours to stay dry. And we've had rain in the forecast, so I haven't been able to do it. I'm gonna shut this off right now, let it dry, and then foam it in. The next two problems are related to rocking around the outside edge of the pond primarily because every time it rains, dirt is washing into the pond in large amounts. That's why the pond looks brown instead of clear, even though it has good filtration. So until I solve that problem, my pond is not gonna look good. And I think I have a really good idea that's going to effectively keep dirt from washing into the pond. The final problem is I'm already developing algae very quickly. It hasn't even been set up two weeks. So I'm going to have to address all three of those things, hopefully all in this video. So let's get started. Common reasons for an algae bloom are excessive light, which we definitely have, excessive nutrients, which we probably have, especially with all the runoff coming in, and I've seen some frogs in there along with the fish I've stocked. Third reason is it's a new pond, and until the ammonia cycle has a chance to run its course, you're going to have more undigested nutrients as ammonia in the water. It's going to cause you'd be more likely to have that spike in algae. And this isn't a permanent solution. There are other ways I'm going to address it, but while I'm sitting here waiting on the waterfall to dry out, I'm gonna scoop out algae by hand. That is one little spot. Knowing that things like this can happen is why I didn't put very many fish in it yet. Until it's had time to balance, there's only a handful of goldfish and one koi. One of the goldfish was right in front of where I had the camera, but I don't know if you could see it because of the algae, but it was swimming right there. So the fish are fine. They don't really mind the algae that much, but it's a sign that the pond is not yet balanced. Will koi eat algae? They don't prefer to eat algae, but in absence of other food, koi will eat algae. So, one immediate response is feed less for excess nutrients. Maybe your fish will eat some of it. That did not eliminate my algae by any stretch, but it might have set the growth back by a day. This stuff is mainly the same as your Great Stuff Expanding Foam, except it's formulated for waterfalls and it's black or gray. The strategy on this product is you let it get mostly set up till it develops a skin over the top 
and then once you get that skin you can kind of smash it down into place and then you smash the river rock on it so that it doesn't look like you have foam in your waterfall it looks more natural now I've got this entire bag of, of river rock here. I'm gonna take this river rock and just spread it out over top of here. And I'm just gonna put a ton of it on. And if, where there's too much, the, the water flow is gonna remove it. Or anything that doesn't stick in the foam, the water will take care of. Everything about that sucked. Felt like it wasn't going right. I hated every minute of it, but I think the end result is it's gonna look good. So my big plan of repairing the waterfall when there was no chance of rain didn't work out because it's been raining. Today we're gonna get back to the work of finishing this pond out. First thing I wanna do is work on cleaning up the water and then we're gonna start on finishing around the perimeter, which is the big time consuming part of this. But I've got several different things I'm going to do to attack the algae problem, which somehow looks a lot better today. And once we do everything we can to deal with the algae problem, I've got some future plans to keep this from being a recurring problem. We're also going to add some fish. First thing I want to do is change about maybe 25% of the water. I'm going to do that by putting the sump pump into the water plugging it in, letting it suck while the garden hose is running into the pond. And I'm actually gonna have the outfeed of the sump pump go into that drainage and it's going to feed this water down into the big pond. So I'm always trying to keep as much water as I can in my pond and it wouldn't, you couldn't practically fill a pond with a garden hose. But if I'm pumping this water out, I might as well put it down there. And then I'm pumped. I got some cool looking fish. I want you to see those too. I put the I put the sump on the shallow part of the pond. That way I don't have to have any concern about it leaving it on too long and it draining the pond down too far because it'll only suck down to a few inches of water in the top section at worst. Probably let that sump run for 30 minutes to an hour. That'll drop the water level like eight inches, something like that from previous experience. Then it'll take an hour to fill that back up, at which point I can turn the filter back on. Now that is pumping 3,300 gallons per hour, 3,500 per hour into a perforated pipe that leads to the pond. So it's only going to work if the water's, if the ground is saturated. But either way, it avoids pumping a mud puddle out into the yard somewhere. So let's go check the other end of that pipe and see if we've got water coming out. I love it when a plan comes together. The pond has sucked down about four inches. I'm going to let it go a little while longer before turning on the water. As you can see, I've also got four bags floating in the pond. Those are the new fish, and I'm, I'm really loving these new fish. I think it's gonna really liven it up out here. So we're almost ready to start putting water back in. Now, these guys have been in bags long enough. Time to start letting them out. What we have here is two small koi. These have fantastic coloration on them. At first I was having trouble finding anything, any kind of fit, koi with nice colors on them. And without spending a bunch of money, that is. And these look great. And all the fish today I was intentional about trying to get a variety of colors so that when we sit out here by this pond, it's gonna just be nice to look at. 
Same routine I've shown in my last couple of videos with the fish. I'm just gonna keep scooping fresh, or scooping pond water into this bag until it's more pond water than fish store water, and then we'll let them go. These, these are Shabunkin goldfish. I don't know if you can see them, but the colors on them, again, are really nice. These two are my favorite of the koi. They're good size compared to my hand. One is a black and white, the other is orange and white. This water lettuce really needs some sun, but it's a nice plant that will spread, but not spread so fast that it takes over the whole pond. But everything we have here is ideal pond mates for each other. They're all peaceful community fish that like to be hand fed. And this guy is no exception to that. It's called a dojo loach. They also call them weather loaches because their activity, they can sense barometric, barometric pressure and their activity changes based on that. And so in Japan, they use them to predict the weather a little bit. But the point is here, it's a, it looks like an eel, but it's an algae eating fish that can handle a wide range of temperature and will feed out of your hand and is a good tank or pond mate for these koi. So this guy's as acclimated as he can be. We're gonna let him go. From the time we got the pond rocked in, I've only really been dreading one part of the finish, and that is what to do with the edge of the liner. So what's happening right now is when it rains, water's running down here and pushing dirt into the pond. You see this little pocket of water that's full of dirt? That's what's making this look nasty all the time. And I've seen a couple different ways to deal with this. I don't like any of them. Is it if you put anything over the top of this, it's still anything that hits here is gonna run in. So what I think I'm gonna do is cut this excess off pretty short. Like that. And then fold it over and put more rocks on top of it after it's folded. And that's going to be slow and tedious, but I don't see a better way. So, of course, this rock was also really dirty. So I just took it over and washed it off. I need bigger rocks. That's not making any progress. This is an ideal rock shape for doing this top ring. I placed these few rocks right here that you just saw, and then I stopped for like 30 minutes and just stared at it, thinking about what I want to accomplish here. So we've got a rock that's in the pond, and water level 
is a couple inches below the top of that rock. And we've got a liner that we're folding over that rock. We place another rock on top. Now this new rock that's on top that I just placed, it's on top of the liner. Where do we want the dirt level to be? Do we want it up at the top of that rock? Because hypothetically erosion could still push some of that dirt in. I kind of think we do want that, that dirt to come partially up the rock, but then I think we want the dirt to slope away from the pond. And currently we've got a water level here with a rock on top of it, and then the ground level's here, but it's actually coming uphill, so water would rush down towards the pond, and I don't think that's what we want. So I've got this soil right here that I took out of the new swale down by the big pond. I've got that to work with, on backfilling around this new ridge of rocks I'm putting down. But what I'm thinking right now is, you know, I'm standing two or three feet away from the pond. I want to lower the spot where I'm standing right now. But I don't want rain that lands here to run into the pond. So I think what I'm going to do is go get the skid loader and scrape off about three inches of this. And the irony is that I added dirt here to begin with. All four sides of the pond need a version of what I just did, which is reading the grade around the pond. Where's water coming? Like we're uphill up here. Where's that water gonna go? So I think on this side, we'll want the ground a lot higher. Over here, we wanted it to slope away just slightly. So I'm gonna have to be thoughtful all the way around the pond about the way I grade. But for right now, I've graded this side. I'm gonna work on rocking this side. And let me show you real quick what I think I'm gonna do with the dirt up against the rock. So now we've got our finished edge. I was thinking I would just put a little bit of dirt up against it like that. That's possible a little bit of this filters in between and causes the problem I'm trying to avoid. But if it does, it'll be temporary. And the thought is, I'm gonna get some grass seed on this ASAP. And once you've got grass on here, it won't be as bad. I think I'm going to shut the camera off because Working around this perimeter, all of it is going to look like any of it. And there's no variety there, so I don't want to just make the video long for no reason. I'll be back when I'm doing something besides setting rocks on this perimeter. Alright, this is a tricky part of the process, which is kind of hiding this waterfall box. And I also want to use this as a place to allow for overflow. So I'm going to pull this out. And I've built these rocks up higher, so maybe it won't suck everything into the skimmer. But I've got some rocks set right on here to level out with the top of this. Then on this spot right next to the skimmer is our lowest point on the whole thing. That's going to be where it overflows. And I've made a little gully right here leading back to this drain. So most of the time I think the pond's going to be low, if anything, from evaporation. But if it rains a lot and we get an overflow, that should come out right here and run into our drain and run down to the other pond. And next to that, I put this one here. And that right there. I'll put a couple rocks under here. And then we might put some fake decor on the back half of this. 
Here by the waterfall is a little bit of a tricky spot. You can see how much mud was running down in there. This is some of that washout that just stopped right here. I think for this spot I need a really big rock to finish this out. But that's uphill. Water is going to run down into the pond. So I'm thinking I'm going to pull all of this up, trim it, and then put a huge rock right here. Trim it tight down this. I'm trying to cut back as much of the liner as I can without causing a leak to try to make this look as natural as possible so it feels like there's a spring in the yard instead of something man-made. And then I'm just packing dirt in as tight as I can so that hopefully these rocks don't shift. The timing worked out great where I needed to dig that swale on the main pond just a few days ago. So what I'm spreading right now is good topsoil that still has the grass seed in it. And I would imagine this is going to spring up pretty quickly, which will save a lot of hassle trying to get grass to grow. Okay, this will be my last vlog style pond update. Next time you see this pond, it will be completely finished. And I'm gonna do a recap that shows every step from painting the circle on the ground to finished with clear water and maybe even having all the grass grown in. So this has been one of the most rewarding projects I've ever done. I can't believe I'm this close to the end. I appreciate you guys following along. I'll put links on the screen to more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.